Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss network topologies. So network topologies are the layout by which computers are connected. So the computers which are part of the network, how they are connected with each other and are how they are related with each other is known as network topologies. There are two views of network topologies. One is called physical topology and second one is called logical topology. In physical topology, we are concerned with the physical connectivity between the nodes. So we are just concerned with, uh, with how the computers are, how the, how the nodes are connected with each other within a network. And this physical topology is also known as cable topology. It means how, are they, how they are cabled together. Whereas in logical topology, we are concerned with the way those data frames travel between the nodes. So we are concerned more about the data frames, uh, the flow of the data frames between the network within, with, with, within, within a network. And this logical topology may be independent of the physical layout. It means the physical layout or the physical topology may be different from the logical topology. Now, very first topology is known as point-to-point -point topology. This is the simplest of the topologies. And this is, in this uh, topology, actually two nodes are connected, connected directly. So these are two nodes and they are directly connected by using some physical medium. And moreover, if the data flows only in one direction, then this is known as half duplex operation. And if the data flows in both of the directions, then this operation is known as full duplex. Next one is bus topology. In bus topology, actually all the computers which are part of the network, for example, these all computers are connected using a common medium. So this is a medium, common medium, and all of the nodes are connected with that medium. And these nodes are connected with that common physical medium with the help of a drop line. So this drop line is again a cable which is used to get connected with the physical medium. And in addition to that, we also use the terminator and the end of the cable. So the use of the terminator is to absorb the signal which are traveling up to the end. Because if we if you don't use terminator here, then the signal will be, will be reflected back and they can interfere with other signals. The advantage of first topology is that this is cost effective because less cable is required as compared to other topologies which, which we will discuss uh, a bit later and the disadvantage the major disadvantage of bus topology is that if the main cable fails if this cable fails then no node will be able to transmit any data to other it means the whole or the entire network fails and second disadvantage is that if we keep adding more and more nodes in the network then performance of the network decreases and the third drawback of this bus topology is that, that this network uh, or this bus topology is insecure. Insecure means when the data travels from one node, that data has to be sent to all the nodes which are connected with this medium. So the data will be sent to all the nodes. Only the node for which this data is, only that node will receive that data or that node will process that data. Other nodes will only just discard those data. But the data or the frames has to go to all of the nodes which are connected with the common medium. And only the node which is, which is the actual recipient of the data, that node will receive the data and it, and it will process it. So this is the reason that this is called insecure because all the nodes, even though they are not a destination, they are going to receive it, receive the data. And then let's discuss this the uh, mesh topology. In mesh topology, actually every node which is part of the network is connected with every other node in the network. For example, here, if we take an example of this node, so you can see this node is connected with this node, this node and this node and this node. It means each node has a responsibility to get connected with all the nodes which are part of the network. And the, the advantage of this mesh topology is that this is secure. Secure means if this 
user wants to send data to only this user, then there is a connection, dedicated connection in between them, and the data will only be sent to that node. Rest of the nodes which are available in the network, they will not receive the data. And this highly redundant, highly redundant means they, it has connection to all of the nodes. If one node fails, is still this node will be able to communicate with the rest of the nodes available in the network. And of course, because of this redundancy, this fault is easily di diagnosed. So if there is a fault, we can easily diagnose that which node has got the problem. But the drawback of this mesh topology is that this is expensive. You see, we need more and more wires are the connections between the nodes. So how many connections do we need? This depends on the number of nodes in the network. So number of connections required is, is, is calculated by using this formula. This is like this. So for example, in this case, we have one, two, and three, four, and five. So we have five computers and five nodes. To connect these five nodes, actually, we need almost by using this formula, we need, I think, the 10. We need 10 connections to get connected uh, the nodes, only five nodes, if you are using the mesh topology. So this is the drawback that we need more and more cables there. And in, in addition to that, we also need multiple, those many cards here. We need those many adapters here to process uh, the data from all the nodes which are connected there. And then is partial mesh topology. This partial is exactly like that, but in partial topology, actually some of the no, some of the cables are missing. For example, in the partial mesh topology, this node, the connection from this node to this node is missing. So this is somehow the, uh, the same as that. So advantage is same, and this advantage is again the same, expensive, and uh, uh, this is actually not the, Disadvantage, sorry. So this is actually not the disadvantage, but this is the advantage. So highly redundant, this is an advantage, and this is also robust, so this is also an advantage. Sorry for this. And then we have the star topology. In the star topology, actually, you, you see all the nodes. So these all nodes are connected with a central device. So this is the central device, and this central device may be a switch or a hub. So all the computers in the network are connected to the central point and the central device or central point can be a switch or a hub. And the advantage of star topology is that instead of these many cables, so in mesh topology, you saw the formula, instead of these many cables, we only need n number of cables. So we need n cables as compared to mesh topology. And this is simple and easy to design. And, uh, and this is also robust. Robust means if any one node fails, then this is not going to affect the network. Other nodes will still be able to communicate. But the drawback is that since all the nodes are connected with the central point that is switch or hub, and if the switch or hub fails, then the entire network fails. So this is called the single point of failure. And all the nodes in that case will not be able to communicate. So only because of that, this is here. And then is ring topology. In ring topology, actually signal, signal travels following a path that is really similar to the ring. So this is a ring topology. And in this case, actually performance is less affected by adding more nodes in the network. So as compared to bus topology, if we add more and more nodes in the network, the performance is, is less affected in that case. And the the, the so this, this is how the data travels in the ring topology. And the drawback of this ring topology is that if only one node fails, then the entire network will just fail. So if any one node fails, for example, this node fails, then the correct connection breaks out and we will not be able to get connected with any of the nodes. So only if this breaks or any node breaks, then we'll not be able to communicate. And this is also difficult to troubleshoot if any problem uh, occurs because we will not be able to find out which node is in problem. Then it's a dual ring. So in dual ring, 
signals traveling travels uh, again in a, in a in a shape of ring but now the signal actually travels now in both directions so if one of the ring fails then the other ring takes over and we have got some other redundant network it means if one fails another ring takes over and so this is the advantage provided by this dual ring topology and finally we have the hybrid topology in hybrid hybrid topology actually we combine two or more topologies together so for example in this case we have this ring topology and we also have the mesh topology and if you want to make a hybrid topology then we make a connection like this so you can see this connection this connection so we have connected two topologies together to make a hybrid topology and the advantages are inherited from the component topology so whatever advantage they both have those will be the advantages of hybrid topology as well as if both of them have some disparate advantages then those disadvantages will be inherited in the hybrid topology as well so this is all about the physical topology in my next video i'll discuss the logical topology of a network and i hope you got some of the idea today and uh, i hope to see you in the next video thank you thank you very much